Hello and welcome to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. But before we get started, what are we drinking? Black Christmas. Oh, nice. Left over from this past Christmas. Today we're going to bring to you a part 7 for season 7, 1988's Friday the 13th, The New Blood. This movie was directed by John Carl Buechler. He was mostly a special effects guy. He did the special effects on The Reanimator and From Beyond. He directed Troll, Cellar Dweller, and Ghoulies 3. So, he's a <laughs> schlock master. <laughs> Stars Terry Kisser, and he's probably most famously Bernie in Weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> Jennifer Banco's in this, and you might know her as being the little girl in Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 3. Yeah. Yakety yak, <laughs> don't talk back. <laughs> William Butler is in this. He's also in Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3 and the Night of the Living Dead remake. Get some of this damn shit done! Yeah. Lar Park Lincoln is in this, and she is also in Freddy's Nightmares, the TV show, as well as House 2, the second story. <laughs> well, this movie starts off with Tina and her family, and Tina's just a young girl at this point. They're spending, I guess, the weekend or something at a cabin here inside, and like, you should stop drinking! Don't tell me what to do! <laughs> <laughs> Typical, yeah. <laughs> so the kid runs out. You hit mommy again! He's all slapping her, I guess. And, and so she takes a boat to try and get away from her dad, and her dad's on the dock trying to coax her back. And she gets so upset, she's like, I wish you would die! And the dock starts rocking back and forth, and it collapses onto him, killing him. It turns out that Tina has special powers, it seems. Years later, Tina's still struggling with essentially killing her dad in and out of mental institutions. Now she's being seen by a Dr. Cruz. They're going back to that cabin. Dr. Cruz is trying to get her to do more telekinetic things, right? And he's got some sick matchbook and yeah. puts it on the table and, come on, Tina, move it move the matches and she can't do it at first but he keeps poking at her and yeah. gets her all mad and it finally moves it's all cheap <laughs> shitty dude <laughs> a group of kids at another cabin next door gathering around for a birthday party one of the guys at this cabin nick sees tina and instantly has a liking for her and they kind of <laughs> actually hit it off right away tina's feeling really remorseful for killing her dad and she goes right back to the dock where it happened and she's standing there wishing it never happened and wishing that her dad was back. She doesn't know that Jason <laughs> Voorhees is down there from Jason Lives. He's chained down there with that rock. Instead of bringing her dad back from the dead with her powers, she brings back Jason Voorhees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all epic, yeah. dude. <laughs> now that Jason's alive, of course, he goes on a killing spree. <laughs> Tina meets these kids. She actually sees how they're going to be killed by Jason. Dr. Cruz has actually been hiding all this evidence to make Tina believe that she is going nuts to hopefully push her off the deep edge and she'll do some sort of crazy telekinesis thing and he can catch it on camera and yeah. get rich off of her basically. Further his own ass. The mom finds this out and listens to a tape he made where he's kind of saying all this. They get in a big fight and they run off into the woods. Jason is killing off all the kids including the mom and the damn doctor in the woods, <laughs> which leaves Tina and Nick left over to do battle with Jason. And that's where we're going to end the plot. If you want to see what happens, I'm sure you know what happens. <laughs> yeah. I'll keep watching the new blood, but first, is it trash or treasure? <laughs> well, that'll bring us to the treasure aspect of this movie. And one of the first things is Jason himself, right? It's pretty cool. His design, the Jason design, <laughs> is pretty neat. He's done battle with Tommy Jarvis, been stuck under the water for how long? So he's pretty beat up and you can see like his bones all coming through his <laughs> skin and it, it looks really good. That's one of the better things that they managed to do with the series is continue Jason's battle damage yeah. throughout all of yeah. the movies. And the continuity of the mask is actually pretty good. Dr. Cruz is a great character in this movie. And he's probably one of the better characters in the whole series. He's yeah. kind of up there with Tommy Jarvis as yeah. being a really good character. He's not a likable character. He's, he's, he's an asshole. He's out for his own benefit. And mm -hmm. he kind of wants to screw over Tina and get famous off of her. But 
all that makes him a good deep character. Yeah. Way, way more deep than any other of the characters in this movie. Throws the, the mom into Jason, like, <laughs> yeah. sacrifices yeah. her. Like, what an asshole. Like, fuck. He's one of those you love to hate him type guys. <laughs> yeah. Another good thing about this movie is it's really atmospheric. It's a bit darker than Jason Lives. Jason Lives is kind of cartoony. Yeah. It's all bright. A lot of it takes place during the day. This is all at night and it's really dark and atmospheric and it's got more of a, a darker edge to it, which makes it a bit more serious. Mm -hmm. Even though the premise is kind of silly with this girl with these psychic powers, yeah. visually it looks more serious than even Jason Lives. And the music helps with that too, right? They introduce a, a bit of a different score in this movie and it's a little eerie and creepy. Yeah. It helps with the atmosphere. Good old Harry, who did the scores for all the Friday the 13th movies, he always kind of changes it up a little bit in each movie. It's kind of the same. The same same kind of theme, yeah. but it's always tweaked a little bit in each movie, and in, in this movie, of course, it's Just tweaked a little, a little bit. bit, and it sounds a bit more modern, you know, it's still got the orchestral stuff, but that, that intro sounds a bit more modern during the opening credits. And the showdown between Tina and Jason is actually pretty good. It's pretty epic, really. Quite epic, yeah. um, They destroy everything in their path. Yeah, it's kind of like a Godzilla sort of movie, yeah. almost, <laughs> destroying houses, power lines. They, she makes him float into that puddle and yeah. just electrocutes Jason. And that a whole stoop all falls yeah. on him and everything. And <laughs> yeah, it's quite the battle. It's, uh, Jason takes a shit kicking in this. You know? Yeah, yeah. And that'll bring us to the trash of this movie. The first piece of trash of this movie is the whole plot. The whole telekinesis thing is just so stupid. No, no it's not. Don't you remember when I made that uh, case of beer float? Look, look. I'm making it float! I'm making the box levitate! <laughs> You're just fucking drunk! No! Oh. No! Oh. You're just fucking drunk. No! No! The premise! <laughs> the story is just so damn stupid. I can never get behind this girl with blonde hair that can make things happen yeah. with her mind. Firestarter came out and it was kind of popular. Like, Carrie. Carrie's like, okay, let's just do one of those and throw Jason in there. It's like they had a different script kicking around for another movie and they're like, well, we also want to make a Friday the 13th. Let's just throw Jason in there. It'll be okay. Yeah, yeah it'll sell. <laughs> yeah, it'll sell. <laughs> but it's just so stupid. How are we going to get Jason back from the dead this time? Well, a girl with special powers brings him back accidentally. Yeah. That's a great idea. <laughs> yeah. It's like you can picture all the execs around the big desk. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's great. They did a lot of coke in the 80s, <laughs> flying high, thinking, that is fucking yeah. great. The characters in this movie just plain suck. Yeah. <laughs> like, they're so lame. You don't care about any of them besides... Maybe Dr. Cruz, <laughs> and he's an asshole. He's the Even the main girl, Tina, the way the movie is sort of structured, it's hard to even care about uh, her. You don't give a shit about her. She, can, she sucks. The yeah. acting is kind of subpar. And her character, besides the fact that she's got special powers, that's all you know about her. Yeah. You don't, she's not developed as a character. You don't care no. about her. The fact that she has telekinesis and can sort of take care of herself. Yeah. Why do you need to worry about her? Yeah, it's basically Jason versus a Jedi. Yeah, who's, essentially. Who's gonna fucking win? I think the <laughs> Jedi is gonna win. Exactly, yeah, he can't fucking lay a finger on her, yeah. so who gives a damn? The dialogue in this movie, again, just like the characters, is so poor, it's, there's not one memorable line, really. No. The only line I ever remember from this movie is, happy fucking birthday. <laughs> Another piece of trash about this movie is, well, it's not scary. Which is fine, I guess. You know, Friday the 13th movie stopped being scary many, yeah. many movies ago. <laughs> yeah. But it's also not funny either. So, what is it? It's not entertaining, really. It exactly. should be one or the other, or maybe a bit of both. But it's neither. You can't even brag about the kills in this movie either. Because they all are pretty lame. They're pretty poor. <laughs> They're really. pretty piss poor kills. We can only mention the two good ones, really, and that's the sleeping bag death, where he picks that woman up and just whacks her against the tree, <laughs> and the one where that stuck-up bitch 
gets killed too. Where you know she opens the door to Jace and he takes that axe and <laughs> puts it right into her head and then just throws her into that TV yeah, over the TV. <laughs> I also like the party horn dad. Yeah, it's pretty funny. funny, just the sound. Yeah. <laughs> just like every other Friday the 13th movie, the death scenes were bastardized and cut down to make the R rating yeah. instead of an X rating. And you can go in the special features for the DVDs, the Blu-rays, and see the uncut kills. And even then, they're not great. And the tools that Jason uses in this movie, the weapons, <laughs> make no sense as well it's like what the fuck is up with like that buzzsaw thing like <laughs> he just keeps getting these weird tools out of nowhere yeah out of like literally out of thin air <laughs> y'all hear it starting like way off screen he's all struggling <laughs> like it's funny and it's pretty good like the buzzsaw and all that yeah. shit but it as far as it making any sense, yeah. it makes none. At least in Jason Lives, he's got that tool belt, so you know he's got a yeah. whole arsenal yeah. on him, right? <laughs> but in this one, he's just like, yeah, like you said, out of thin air. Yeah. And these tools, like, I was like, they're all huge. I'm like, do, they, do these even exist in real life? Or they just <laughs> invent them for the fucking movie? Like, I've never seen some weird buzz yes. on a stick thing. Like, what the fuck is that? And where the hell did he get it from? Is he keeping some arsenal behind all these trees and everything? Yeah. He's all planning? Like, <laughs> And Jason, man, in this movie, he doesn't do a very good job of setting up the, the dead bodies. Like, there's that one guy who keeps falling out of trees and yeah. the same guy. It's like, <laughs> yeah. you can't tie that guy up there better, man. Jason's all behind a tree watching <laughs> yeah, him, waiting, like, like hoo, 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 I got him, man. <laughs> yeah, this'll do it. Yeah. And then he does, he falls and swings, and then the kids take off, and then he goes and does it again. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some prank? <laughs> the setting in this movie kind of sucks too, like even though it's your typical Friday the 13th setting, it doesn't feel like it's anywhere near Camp Crystal Lake. It doesn't really have that isolated feeling that you usually have in these camp settings. And the end for this movie really is kind of stupid too. Like the dad all comes out of the water and grabs Jason and... He's all fine. <laughs> like, he's, he's, no, like, he's been down there for at least like ten years or yeah, more. He's all perfect. <laughs> like, what? like what the fuck? Like, and how did he kill Jason? Like he grabs him, and then what? Yeah, he just hold him forever. Yeah, or what? Yeah. So when the dad died in the beginning. They never found him? I, yeah, like, like, they didn't even bother to look. <laughs> it's not like this is a terribly difficult area where it's, he died It's here. by the dock, by the shore, like it's not even that deep. Like, Send a man in to go get him, like what the fuck, they just leave him there? Leave him there. <laughs> so Friday the 13th, the new blood, trash or treasure? It's trash. I agree, it's trash too. It's definitely my least favorite in the whole series. I think. Yeah, and it's the least enjoyable. Yeah. There's nothing to really, there's nothing redeeming about this movie no, at all. No, it's not scary, it's not campy or funny, it's just kind of there. So let us know what you guys think, trash or treasure. I'm sure some people do like this movie, oh, yeah. I'm sure there's some love for it out there somewhere, but you're not going to find it here. <laughs> no damn where. <Yeah. laughs> and until next time, keep drinking. Keep drinking.